Joe Pierce here, outside the worldwide headquarters of the Wormkeep Entertainment Company in Costa Mesa, California. This is the end of 2015 report on Inherit the Earth's Sand and Shadows development. This time I have a status report, including a retrospective, a con report, and an interview. Here are some of the backgrounds that have been completed this year. The short update last month had a rough concept sketch of the Fishing Village Gate, a new location for the sequel. And here is the completed art. During this year, I have rewritten the game prototype to create a full adventure game engine and added in-game editing features. There is still some coding to be done, though. I also created the Animation Composer app to help artists in sequencing frames of animation. Recently I spent some time looking for a true type font that shares stylistic similarities to the original game dialogue font. And the font I found is Fondamento, seen in this conversation. On Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend, I attended LostCon, the yearly science fiction and fantasy convention held at the LA Airport Marriott. My primary reason for being at the con had nothing to do with the con itself, but I still did wander around a bit. More on why I was there later. Fan-run cons usually provide a space for other cons to promote themselves. Here is a string of tables with representatives of such cons. The dealer's room had a couple of dozen vendors selling t-shirts, videos, jewelry, books, and other knickknacks. And on the subject of knickknacks, personally, I got a giggle out of the punny company name. This is the David Gerald store table, helmed by, well, David Gerald, author of many books and writer of the popular Star Trek episode Trouble with Tribbles, and the animated sequel. The gamer's room had people playing board, card, and RPG games. This photo shows a selection of board games one could check out and play. And there was a separate electronic gaming room. I ran into a few friends I don't see too often. Gene Turnbow was an employee at the Dreamers Guild and managed the scripting group on Halls of the Dead, The Fairy Tale Adventure 2. Currently, he runs the internet radio station Krypton Radio, which caters to SF and fantasy fans. You should check it out. After plugging Gene's Enterprise, I should also remind everyone of the crowdsourced project that helps fund these videos. Please consider becoming a patron. As I mentioned previously, I didn't attend LostCon for the con itself, but to have lunch with and interview Allison Hershey, an artist and writer who's had a long history with Inherit the Earth. We sat down in her hotel room to have a chat. Thanks for joining me for this interview, Allison. Oh, well, I'm quite pleased to be here. Please tell us about yourself and how you were introduced to the video game industry. Well, I was uh, living with uh, several friends who were involved already in North uh, San Fernando Valley. They were already working for Microillusions, which was an Amiga-based game company uh, in Granada Hills. I was an artist already, and they just asked me to be involved. I worked on a few covers. Let's see, I was doing everything, really. I was helping with the packaging. I did a little bit of beta testing for games that were already coming out. We were living on a property that was owned by the com local computer game company. Uh, we were subletting the apartment, and they were using the garage for doing manufacturing. It was almost like a hippie uh, situation. Basically, I'd say, who needs to do this, or who wants to do this? And I'd raise my hand, yeah, I can do some artwork for that. And that's basically how I got involved. So how did you get involved with the Dreamers Guild? Well, uh, we were working with a company called Microillusions at the time. And uh, we noticed uh, that things, things weren't going very well for that company. And uh, we got together, uh, David Joyner... Robert McNally and I went out to dinner. I believe you went out with us. Yes. Uh, Joe went out with us. Um, and we 
started saying, hey, you know, we could probably do it. Um, we could get together, put together some projects, maybe do some consulting work, uh, find some people who know how to run a business to help us out. We made a lot of plans. I think it took us about a year before we had a real set of projects going. We worked out of Robert McNally's uh, apartment at the time on card tables, and it grew from there. Was Inherit the Earth, Quest for the Orb, the first project at the company? No, it wasn't. Uh, I did a few smaller projects. I worked on a card game. I think it was called Vegas Games. More Vegas Games. More Vegas Games, so it was a sequel. Uh, but I did some artwork for that, and I did a few demos, uh, demonstrations, basically, uh, to uh, try to drum up some business from other companies, because uh, we did a lot of contracting work to uh, uh, help get us off the ground, basically. I believe Inherit the Earth was the first original game that we worked on. Others were, uh, you know, I feel like they were like appetizers. <laughs> <laughs> You are credited as art director on Hurt the Earth. What role does an art director play in the development of a video game? Well, art director is a catch-all. Uh, it can be a small part uh, of a game where you're just doing certain aspects, or you could be involved with anything visual. Uh, with Inherit the Earth, I was, uh, I was actually co-directing with uh, David Joyner, who was really the director of the whole game. Uh, he he's also an artist, so we did a lot of things cooperatively. Uh, if, with this particular game, my role was more watching the other artists, uh, hiring them, supervising their work, uh, making sure that the milestones were met, doing a little bit of cleanup. You know, if we decided that the artwork didn't quite meet the spec, a lot of times I would be the one who would clean it up. And so that was my role in that game. Who were some of the artists involved? Well, we had April Lee. Uh, she was a good friend of ours. She actually learned how to use computers at that point. She didn't think she was a computer artist. Fortunately, at that time, uh, anybody could be a computer artist. And they hadn't really trained people up yet. So I brought her in and uh, trained her. and. She ended up being one of the best artists, and she's still working in the industry. Uh, this is, what, 30 years now? Another artist who was very, uh, very involved with the game was Lisa Sample. Her name was Lisa Yanako at that point. She did a great deal of the character design and a lot of the artwork, and she had a lot of input to the game. She helped shape the whole game, actually. She was in on the initial design work as well as everything else. We had, uh, let's see, Glenn Price was uh, hired on to help us. He was also an excellent artist. Uh, he went on to work on with some other projects with me. And uh, we had Reed Waller, who was already an established uh, comics uh, illustrator. Uh, he worked remotely, and it was a little trouble with the, tech, uh, the technicalities, trying to, to uh, work back and forth across the phone lines. Uh, but he did contribute some art to the uh, game. And then there was Ed Lockabon who did almost almost all of the background art. Uh, he was an excellent artist as well. Uh, and he was very fast and very, uh, very good to work with. What are your thoughts on Inherit the Earth as released? As released, I thought it was an excellent game for the time. I was rather pleased with the results. We got a lot of compliments on it. I learned a lot, and yeah, I was pretty proud of it. After Inherit the Earth, what other projects did you work on at the Dreamers Guild? Uh, well, I did a lot of game proposal work, writing up specs for games. I also worked on the preliminaries for I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream, which was a Harlan Ellison-derived work. Uh, I handed that off to another art director uh, when we started ramping up to do Fairy Tale Adventure, which was the game that I spent the most time on when I worked at the Dreamers Guild. It was a very large game, and I believe it took us about two years to put out. After the Dreamers Guild closed, did you continue on in the game industry? Well, I had planned to, but life 
circumstances interfered. I was going to move to London and start working there. I was going to look for uh, work. It was basically going back to where my mother's family lived. And uh, things happened. My parents got ill and I had to return to Los Angeles and care for my parents for the next two or three years. And by the time that was over, my skill set was a little out of date. Uh, so I started looking into other things. I've done occasional work with friends, helping out with small games, uh, with parts of games, with a little bit about packaging. But mostly I went back into illustration. Then I got married and I moved up to uh, the Bay Area and I ended up doing other things. You were the initial artist for the Inherit the Earth webcomic. You also were involved as co-writer. What was the process that was used to make each comic? The process? Uh, the process was actually quite fun. Uh, Joe had the initial uh, story concept and he had the basic plot going. We would sit down and talk about the plot, break it down into smaller pieces, and uh, figure out kind of what direction we were going and how the different parts of the plot would uh, come to fruition basically. We would uh, get together every oh, four to six weeks I'd say, break the plot down further into comic strips and uh, work on the dialogue. And once we both were happy with the dialogue I would go home and do sketches. I would sketch out the strip send it to Joe because by that time we were living 400 miles apart. He would approve it or ask me to make changes and then I would do the final drawing. And with each of these strips that would be a, a week of uh, work. You know, we, it would take a week to put it out, to process it all the way through. Near the end you were actually doing the final dialogue and you actually were doing the lettering or even earlier. Uh, yeah, I was doing the dialogue and the uh, lettering as well. In fact, I was posting the comic at the end. That's, that's right, yes. Which made me feel very independent. <laughs> <laughs> what projects or endeavors are you currently working on? At the moment, I'm working on a book plate for a, uh anthropomorphic uh, uh, story about elephants, actually. Uh, being put out by Tor Books in late December. I'm working on several short stories and a uh, picture book for uh, children's... I'm involved in a children's book writing group at the moment. I'm hoping to transition to being a, a writer-illustrator, doing my own works. Uh, I have ideas for some graphic novels, uh, several children's books, and there's a, a epic novel I want to work on in the next three or four years. Any final words? <laughs> I keep on trucking, I guess. <laughs> Life's good. <laughs>